Hello and welcome to Whence Came You, a Freemasonic podcast featuring research papers and discussions related to Freemasonry. I'm your host, Robert Johnson, a York Rite Mason and Knight Templar. Well, this week at my home lodge, we had an instruction club meeting. I met many brothers from around our district and thought about how I personally do not do much visiting among lodges. I think this year I'm going to change that. I wanted to plug a brother who I recently spoke with and who just finished his Home Lodge's website and asked if he could syndicate the show on his website. I was honored. But on a side note, this brother makes some custom, really nice wood and very nicely crafted pens, including a nice Masonic pen which you will see right away when you follow the link to his site in the links area on our website at wcypodcast.blogspot.com. This week's paper comes to us from a lodge of research in New Zealand. Compasses or compass, which is correct, by Right Worshipful Brother I.J. Nathan, Grand Lecturer. This is a question that has concerned a number of members, but a simple answer cannot be given. There has been a suggestion made that the plural form came into common use when the mariner's compass was invented. The word compass has been recorded as having been used in the 14th century. Three examples are 1340, craftily cast with compass. 1387, made the first compass in 1391 by Chaucer, who wrote of the point of my compass. In 1551, the sentence was recorded, how a prayer of compasses aptly made for two draw the circles. In 1570, the mathematical text had geometry teacheth the vice of the rule and the compasses. Swift wrote in 1745 to fix one foot of their compass wherever they think fit. As recently as 1845, Emerson wrote defined by compass and measuring wand. Earliest uses of the plural form have been recorded in the 16th century. In 1555, we took our compasses and began to measure the sea coasts. In an example, 1594, how to make with your compasses a perpendicular line to fall from any point given another right line. Milton wrote in Paradise Lost in 1667, in his hand, he took the golden compasses to circumscribe this universe. The Mariner's compass first appeared in 1515. Some the anchor laid, one kept the compass and watched the hourglass. In 1552, this was recorded, a skipper cannot guide his ship without direction of his compass. In at least four verses of the Old Testament, compass appears in its singular form. Isaiah 44, 13, the carpenter stretcheth out his rule, he marketh it out with a line, he fitteth it with planes, and he marketh it out with the compass. Other references are Exodus 27, 5, Exodus 38, 4, and Proverbs 8, 27. Early Masonic rituals do not show any marked preference for either form. Pritchard's Masonry Dissected of 1730 uses the singular four times, the plural once. Three distinct knocks published in 1760 has the plural form seven times and the singular twice. Jacob and Boaz, which appeared in 1762, shows a slight preference for the singular over the plural by five to four. In the United States, some jurisdictions use compasses and... There are also Masonic clubs known as Square and Compass Clubs. After reading this far, it would be a bold reader who would say one or the other was correct. There is, however, a criterion of correctness for the modern New Zealand Constitution Mason, and that is how the word appears in our book of Constitution and Ritual. As it has always appeared as compasses, then as far as our working is concerned, compasses is the correct form published from the Proceedings of the Waikato Lodge of Research No. 445 AF and AM, New Zealand. Personally, I've always been told and taught that it's compasses, and it's always plural. Next, I have a short piece from the Short Talk Bulletin entitled Freemasonry and Religion, and this is from Volume 90 of February 2012, Number 2. Freemasonry and Religion The misunderstandings about relationship between Freemasonry and religion will always be with us. Some will always distort the meaning of that relationship to fit their own personal views. But it must be remembered, the only question of religious nature asked of a potential member is, do you believe in God? Or sometimes expressed as, 
Do you believe in a supreme being? How one chooses to believe is the business of that individual and not Freemasonry. Let it also be known that while the Middle East continues to be a place of great turmoil, in that entire region the only place where the Christian, the Jew, and the Muslim can come together in peace and harmony is in the Masonic Lodge. This can happen because Freemasons are tolerant and respectful of each other's religious beliefs. To that end, the Masonic Information Center has prepared a statement on Freemasonry and religion which has been published in our annual report each year since 1993. The statement appears in its usual place, the inside back cover. Please take a moment to read it for a better understanding of the relationship between Freemasonry and religion. The Statement on Freemasonry and Religion prepared by the Masonic Information Center. Basic Principles Freemasonry is not a religion, nor is it a substitute for religion. It requires of its members a belief in God as part of the obligation of every responsible adult, but advocates no sectarian faith or practice. Masonic ceremonies include prayers, both traditional and extempore, to reaffirm each individual's dependence on God and to seek divine guidance. Freemasonry is open to men of any faith, but religion may not be discussed at Masonic meetings. The Supreme Being Masons believe that there is one God and that people employ many different ways to seek and to express what they know of God. Masonry primarily uses the appellation Grand Architect of the Universe and other non-sectarian titles to address the deity in this way. Persons of different faiths may join together in prayer, concentrating on God rather than of the differences among themselves. Masonry believes in religious freedom and that the relationship between the individual and God is personal, private, and sacred. Volume of the Sacred Law An open volume of the Sacred Law, the rule and guide of life, is an essential part of every Masonic meeting. The volume of the Sacred Law in the Judeo-Christian tradition is the Bible to Freemasons, of other faiths, it is the book held holy by them. The Oath of Freemasonry. The obligations taken by Freemasons are sworn on the volume of the sacred law. They are the undertakings to follow the principles of Freemasonry and to keep confidential a Freemason's means of recognition. The much discussed penalties, judicial remnants from an early era, are symbolic, not literal. They refer only to the pain any honest man should feel at the thought of violating his word. Freemasonry compared with religion. Freemasonry lacks the basic elements of religion. It has no dogma or theology, no wish or means to enforce religious orthodoxy. B. It offers no sacraments. C. It does not claim to lead to salvation by works, by secret knowledge, or by any other means. The secrets of Freemasonry are concerned with modes of recognition, not the means of salvation. Freemasonry supports religion. Freemasonry is far from indifferent toward religion. Without interfering in religious practice, it expects each member to follow his own faith and to place his duty to God above all other duties. Its moral teachings are acceptable to all religions. Prepared by the Masonic Information Center, 12, 1993, revised, 9 of 98. This week's famous Freemason is Alexander Henry, the Scottish engineer, inventor, or industrial designer. Alexander Henry, 1828 to 1894, was a Scottish gunsmith based in Edinburgh and a designer of the Henry rifling used in the Martini Henry rifle. He submitted a rifle to the competition organized by the British government for a replacement to their existing Snyder and Field Service weapon. The government did not adopt his action, but did adopt its seven-grooved rifling scheme. The following is his obituary. Mr. Alexander Henry gunmaker, whose name is known to all who have heard the Martini Henry rifle, died in Edinburgh on January 27th, aged 76. He is said to have been the father of the volunteer movement in Scotland, and he himself served as a volunteer for 30 years. He invented the rifle barrel which bears his name in 1859, but it was not till 1871 that it was adopted by the British government in connection with the Martini breach action. The new rifle was first served out to the British Army in 1874 and gradually replaced the Snyder rifle. Mr. Henry also invented a complete rifle, which was adopted by the government of New South Wales. He sat in the town council from 1876 to 1885, was a justice of the peace, 
and an active Freemason. He leaves a family consisting of two sons and three daughters. Otago Daily Times, New Zealand, 24th of March, 1894. That's it for this week. Remember to find us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Whence Came You, and add us to your circle on Google Plus at the email address wcypodcast at gmail.com. You can also email the show at that same address. Visit the website for links to all things Whence Came You, and also links to the Android mobile app, and also the mobile app for Apple, which lets you listen to the show streaming anytime and without syncing. It also allows you to download your favorite episodes, mark them, and get access to exclusive content like Masonic wallpapers and research papers that we read on the show. Anyway, take care, and for once came you, I'm Robert Johnson.